Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior and welcome to another Mortal Kombat movie review. I haven't done one of these in a very long while, but seeing as we've just had the release of Mortal Kombat Legends Scorpion's Revenge, I knew I had to make a review about it because I was extremely excited about it. But does it live up to my hype and expectation? Well, let's talk about it. Also, the first half of the review will have no spoilers, but I will be going into spoiler territory later. So don't worry, I will give you all a heads up when I'm doing so. so without any further ado, let's get on to the video. <sighs> another Mortal Kombat video, another demonetized video. Hey man, I got some excellent news for you today. Oh, alright, hit me. We have a sponsor for the channel. Alright, awesome, who is it? Gamer Bread. What? To be at the top of your game, you need fuel. Introducing Gamer Bread, the world's first high-performance bread made for gamers. Dual functionality flash cools your rib. Get it now at GamerBreadNow.com. That's actually terrible. And they are sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Oh my god. Yes, our sponsor today is Raid Shadow Legends, a deeply immersive, interactive, turn-paced RPG that drives you into a deep and dark world of uncertainty and fear. From here, you shall forge your champions in the pits of Tartarus in order to overcome your demons and become the hero that the world deserves. You, uh... You really hammering this up, huh? Raid is now not only available on your mobile devices, but now on your desktop, so you never have to leave the action. Whether it's crushing the dungeons, destroying other players, or completing the story, you will always have the opportunity to play the game at your fingertips. And to somewhat sweeten the deal, you get new rewards on a daily basis. Wait, so there's a daily login program that gives you silver, gems, and energy on a daily basis? Damn it, now I'm doing it. Oh, ho, ho, not just that, my friend. The reward system has been doubled. So now the reward program, which was originally 90 days, has been changed to 180, meaning that you'll be able to get your hands on Seal the Drake Queen. But who said you just have to get Seal when there's over 400 different champions? So what are you waiting for? Click on the special link in the description below. If you are a newbie, then kudos, because you're going to get 100,000 silver, two clan boss keys, 10 mystery shards, and finally a free rare champion which you will be able to get here massive thank you to raid again for the sponsorship here i really do appreciate it i do in fact play this game time to time when i'm traveling around doing commentary so it's really kind of them to reach out to me with this in a world where youtube kind of demonetizes mortal kombat content creators i do appreciate them stepping in and giving me a helping hand here so big thank you to them for doing so anyway please do remember link down in the description below please do click on it as it does help support out the channel and without any further ado let's get on with the video for real this time well, first off, let's talk about presentation. In terms of visuals, this film is gorgeous to watch. Although it's animated by the same studio that created DC animated movies, there's definitely a different sense of style between the series they animate. Whilst DC has a broad yet somewhat distinct colour palette with how it presents itself visually, MK, I definitely say, shows the talent and skill of the art team, as they are using harsher strokes and the blacks to help add more definition and character to certain expressions. So there's definitely a distinct art style to this film and it does look like it draws a lot of influence from animated shows like Samurai Jack so I find it really charming in that respect. Now I'll be dead honest with all of you the film does not hold back on the violence and I really love how they went all out here with just turning people into cartoon ham like no mercy is shown and punches are pulled. Fools are wasted everywhere and I really can't help but respect the movie for allowing itself to embrace what it is and have it on full display. On top of this I love how they incorporated X rays and cinematic zoom ins during fights to help somewhat emphasize the damage someone has undergone. It's a nice homage to Mortal Kombat 9 where the x-ray mechanic originated from plus again it goes to show that it's not holding back. From a character design standpoint I think everyone looks great. Their designs are sadly not anything we haven't seen before as for the most part nearly everyone has their MKX design but I'm actually okay with that as I do like a lot of costumes from MKX anyway. Mod bias on my part. If I were to be fussy I would say I would have loved to see more original costumes in this film and maybe some MK9 designs with characters like Katana who have rather brief appearances here but again I like 9 and X's designs in general so it's absolutely no deal breaker here for me. Visually everyone looks great. No one looks strange or too out of place minus one Chi but he's so pale and strange looking anyway as he is an Oni but I guess he's supposed to look rather different. Now everyone else looks great and I do feel like their costumes are somewhat extension of who they are. The slick and 
notably expensive attire of Johnny Cage shows his lavish lifestyle as a Hollywood star. Albeit a dying one, the military based attire is an extension of Sonya's very strict and disciplined no BS attitude. Liu Kang's red attire helps somewhat distinguish him as a member of the White Lotus Society, as well as Raiden's chosen one. And Scorpion's very well covered and hollow eyed design expresses Hanzo's return from the afterlife as a vengeful spirit, and in this case, a ninja too. I'm only going to touch on these four because for the most part they are the key characters in this film and everyone else either helps progress the plot or is a secondary character. Now in terms of soundtracks, this film definitely does a good job of having some memorable ones that are both distinct and immersive. During the early stages of the film where we witness the fall of the Shira Ryu and Hanzo pretty much losing his shit, we get an excellent sequence where the music syncs up with his action as he kills members of the Lin Kuei. It's really good stuff and helps engage the viewer with what's happening on screen. There's a few sequences like this in the film that are really nice bits of attention to detail, so I really do appreciate this type of stuff in film. The music overall is pretty damn good and does help complement scenes. I however cannot deny that there are some tracks from time to time that do sound a little bit like stock music, but those tracks are few and far between and they don't linger around for too long. In terms of sound, every bone crunched and spine shattered is extremely satisfying. In some cases, it may be rather excessive, but this tends to only be when there's an x-ray sequence to put more of an emphasis on the damage done. So the fully design in this film was extremely good. No bone crunch feels underwhelming, and blows really do feel like they have force behind them. In terms of voice acting, this is pretty incredible across the board. I don't feel like there's a weak actor amongst the cast, as everyone does an outstanding job. But I must 100% praise Patrick Sites for his performance as Scorpion here. He owns the role, truly showing why he is the best voice actor for the character. Don't at me. His range is incredible in this film, as we get to hear the kindness in his voice as a father and tutor to his son Satoshi, and the blaring screams and the fits of rage he has when he sees Red. Sight's performance here really does steal the show. I was very impressed, and in turn extra disappointed that we didn't have him for Mortal Kombat 11. He really knocked out of the ballpark here. Another voice actor that must be praised for his outstanding performance is Joe McHale who nails Johnny Cage. He's able to tap into that arrogant, snarky, sharp-tongued wit that Johnny is known for and brings it to life extremely well. He's able to really embody those characteristics and portray it so naturally, so props to McHale for doing this, as he did an incredible job. The rest of the cast also do the same, but for me, Sights and McHale definitely stole the show. Now let's briefly touch on the writing here and portrayal of characters because this is what I found the writing in the film to kind of be hit or miss, especially when it came to the story. First off, let's talk about the notable characters in this film, starting off with the poster boy, Scorpion. Now, although the death of the Shira Ryu is a plotline that's been done countless times, at this point, for me, I always appreciate new and different interpretations of their fall. What I enjoy the most is what they can add to the narrative that we haven't seen, so it's great if not so saddening to watch Hanzo actually watch firsthand as his family and clan fall before him. It's truly painful to watch, which is what it should be. Although Hanzo can be depicted as a single-minded, vengeful monster, there's definitely a lot of conflicting choices he must consider in this film, as he starts to ask himself where his loyalty truly lies. The only crutch I will say about Scorpion in this film is that sweet Christ this man is overpowered. It's like poster boy advantage. He's wasting guys everywhere without breaking a sweat. This can serve to be either a good thing or a bad thing if you're a fan of the character. He just steamrolls everyone. Now outside of the Scorpion plot thread, Johnny Cage honestly does steal the show as the somewhat main character. His charisma and naivety is so charming and hilarious, you can't help but adore him in a way. He also serves as the audience character, as he has absolutely no idea why he's even in this tournament. All he knows is that his agent put him here. One thing I really enjoyed about his portrayal here is how he actually interacts with other characters, hitting on Sonya, trying to jest with Liu Kang, and somewhat subtly mocking Raiden in his face. He has great chemistry with everyone. Sonya in this film is really cool. She's a hardcore disciplined soldier who's rigid and strong, but we do see these moments of weakness in her tough and hard exterior. It helps add to a character in that she's not entirely one dimensional. She's stoic and extremely confident in her skill, but this can lead to either her benefit or downfall as a character, as she can sometimes tunnel vision what she's doing and go into situations she's underestimating. What really helps her here is her relationship with Johnny Cage. She considers him a complete and utter
to Slee's ball. But as the film progresses, a form of respect is made between the two, and a somewhat relationship is formed between them. I really like what's going on here between them, as their chemistry and interactions feel far more natural than all the other depictions we've had of them getting together. Liu Kang, unfortunately for me, did kind of nothing in this film. Out of the four main characters we had, Liu was the least developed and very one note. I enjoy Liu Kang, but the character doesn't really do anything up until the one hour mark, and really he gets no development before this point. He's unfortunately very one dimensional and really does embody the antithesis of the chosen one character archetype down to a T. And sadly, this sacrifices all character he does have. There are very small moments of levity that make him not seem so stern. There are more flaws to his character than that, but I will have to touch on it in the spoiler section. Now we're on to Raiden, and much like Liu Kang, he's unfortunately very one dimensional. Luckily, we don't have to see him too much, but he really does embody the wise aged character who's clearly experienced a lot. Now this could be either something that people like or hate, because Raiden gets some really cool scenes in this film action wise, although they are brief. What bothers me about Raiden is how he's basically a walking fortune cookie. Giving off wise one note bits of exposition, this gets very very mundane very quick. I'm not a fan of the Raiden character in general, so maybe I'm nitpicking, but I just wasn't that engaged on screen when he was talking. Now the plot of this film really isn't anything too special, we've all kind of seen it before so I'm not going to go over all the details. Basic gist is, Outworld has won 9 consecutive Mortal Kombat tournaments and is on the brink of victory for Shao Kahn's invasion, thus Raiden must assemble a team in order to hold off their fall. So yeah, basic gist of the tournament and nothing that special. What really keeps the story going forward isn't just the tournament that engages them with other fighters, but the subplots that go with each different character. Everyone kind of has a reason for being here. Raiden's here to monitor and guarantee Earthrealm success. Shang Tsung is there to hold it, Liu wishes to save Earthrealm, Sonya wishes to track down Kano, Johnny wishes to revive his dead career, and Scorpion's looking to hunt down his family's murderer. Everyone has a purpose and no one really feels out of place amongst the main cast, which is good. My only somewhat critique is probably the flow of the story. Although it does have a somewhat free act structure, you can definitely get lost in a lot of the action that goes on here. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing, as there are a few moments of levity, but it gets very up in your face and you may find it a little bit too much or too intense at times. If that doesn't bother you, however, I can tell you're going to have a very pleasant experience. Now, if I were to rate this on a scale of 1 to 10, with 5 being the middle ground of okay, I'll say this film is a solid 7.5. It scratches an itch we're all going for, as we've all wanted a Mortal Kombat movie for some time now, and the itch is scratched well. The animation is fantastic, albeit there is some CGI sprinkled here and there. The voice cast is incredible across the board. Everyone sounds sounds great, there's not a weak voice actor amongst the cast here, the only noticeable thing that I feel drags the film down, and I can't talk about it here in the spoiler free section, is the pacing. You see what I think overall hurts the film, is the 80 minute runtime. There's a lot of subplots going on here, and with how they resolved a lot of conflicts in a very short amount of time, especially with certain rivalries and arcs, felt somewhat rushed and underwhelming. I feel like the film could have benefited a lot from a longer runtime. There are some questionable choices too in regards to how arcs are approached and resolved, which I will talk about in the spoiler end of the review. But overall, I do feel like this is a must watch for any Mortal Kombat fan. It's a great time and if you're a Scorpion fan, you are absolutely going to get your fix here. It's definitely a package with flaws, mind you, but it doesn't ruin the overall viewing experience. I looked forward to watching this film and I can say I came away satisfied. I look forward to what sequels they'll do in the future as it does tease that one, so please do go out of your way to watch it stream it and buy it. Support the official release so we can get more animated movies like this in the future. So yes, this ends the somewhat spoiler free section of the video. So with this being said, this is where you leave the video, go watch the movie, and come back to watch my thoughts on the spoiler section. Good? You ready? Let's talk about spoilers. Now first off, I want to touch on Shira Ryu Massacre, and I must say I really enjoyed how this was done. As I've said, we've seen numerous and different ways of this being done, but this one felt like it cut deep. We got some character development with Hanzo and saw his relationship with his son. Then from here we get to see the painful demise of the Shira Ryu and we experience the death of his wife and even his son. The end of the sequence is truly brutal as he's forced to watch Satoshi die right in front of him. It makes his rage and vengeful return seem that much more justified. It's a great sequence that helps set the tone for the rest of the movie for the next hour. His sequence in hell is also great. We again see how far his vengeance will take him, although I will say him killing hundreds if not 
lots of thousands of demons plays into the problem I had mentioned earlier where I said this guy just seems really really overpowered. I mean even during the third act where he finally confronts Bihan, after we've been building up to this fight for nearly an hour, it's resolved in like what, two or three minutes? And I can't help but feel underwhelmed. I imagined it really sucked if you're a Sub-Zero fan, because this is the one and only time you're going to see Sub-Zero properly. And also set up the plot twist of Quan Chi being the murderer, but even then it's kind of rushed. Also Quan Chi is an idiot for not killing a man that is literally too angry to die. You think he would have learned. Honestly though, Quan Chi gets what he has coming to him, and it's an extremely satisfying kill. Although with his demise now, it does look like we aren't going to be getting Noob Cyborg, which is a shame. But it is far too early to say, and it's not like death has meant much in Mortal Kombat. But in also saying that, wow does Goro get wasted in this movie. His face gets turned into a beef jerky flip flop. I gotta say, I wasn't a fan of this. It kind of undermines Goro's and Liu Kang's fighting skills, and plays into Scorpion being really overpowered. I really do not know how I feel about this choice, but I think this is a good segue into the subplots in this film that I mentioned feeling underwhelming, with Liu's of course here being a prime example. You see, the entire film we are told Liu Kang's the chosen one, and how he'll be the one to save us all, but Liu doesn't really have much character outside of that. He doesn't have anything to do with anyone outside of Raiden, and it makes his interactions with anyone kind of boring, which is a shame seeing as he does interact with Kitana, and it seems like there's no chemistry there at all. Hell, we don't really get to see him fight properly up until the third act. And even then, he doesn't really seem that special when Scorpion can sneeze and wipe out an entire squad of Black Dragons. Liu just feels like he's here to defeat Goro, and we don't even get that as it looks like Goro's about to tear him apart. We also don't get a Shang Tsung fight, which I kind of get and I don't get as Scorpion forfeited the fight so Liu Kang won by default. Again, it's really strange. What kind of bugs me at the end is when Raiden says that Liu was always destined to kill Shao Kahn, not Goro, which kind of baffles me considering the hierarchy that we know is going on. If Liu Kang couldn't beat four-armed Jim Bro Goro, what chances does he think he has against Outworld's Emperor? I don't know if I'm being really nitpicky. If I am, please let me know, but I just feel kind of underwhelmed of what they did with Liu Kang here. As everyone was singing his praises up until the Goro fight. Now Johnny and Sonya's arc is honestly fantastic. There's a lot of focus on Cage as a character in the movie, and he's able to carry a lot through Act 2, as we learn stuff along the way with him. It's a pleasure to listen to his exposition with Sonya, which is very fun. He's a sleazeball idiot, she's a to the point badass, and it makes for great chemistry between them. I really enjoyed their relationship here because it feels very natural. Johnny goes through an arc here where he comes to the realization that it can't always be about him, so he steps up his game and decides to save Sonya. It's a great moment between the two and I honestly enjoyed it. I will say however, I was not a fan of how quick Sonya disposed of Kano. Again this lines in with what I said earlier, of feeling like plot threads were resolved very very quickly, and this was definitely one of them. I will say I appreciate the inclusion of Baraka, I thought that was a nice touch. Although the details are not there, I'm pretty sure that's him. I liked Reptile being here, but man does he get it bad, getting brutality in like what, 3 minutes? They could work around this with how reptiles regenerate limbs, plus no one ever really stays dead in Mortal Kombat, but damn, nasty way to go. Kitana's inclusion here is nice but somewhat forgettable. Everything we pretty much saw of her in the promotional material was what we would see of her in this film. They are 100% setting her up for the next movie, but again, I wish we could have seen her a tad bit more. She just isn't really involved for the most part. I liked the inclusion of Jax, it's nice to have a cameo, but really does stick around in the film for a while, so I'm glad about the inclusion of Jax. Even if he is destined in every timeline to never have actual arm. I definitely feel like it was a strange decision at the end of the film to just allow Scorpion to die, considering that he is the poster boy, and well, he pretty much wrecked shop here. So definitely an interesting choice. From a story arc perspective, it's definitely poetic for him as he did avenge his family in one way, shape or another. It's just very strange to me considering how early on this has been done, which means that in the future, if Kuai Liang does pick up the mantle, then we may be missing out on that whole rivalry and instead Kwai's art may in fact be focused on the cyber initiative, but that's definitely my tinfoil hat theory. I think for the most part, this kind of covers all my general thoughts on the spoiler section of the film. I have problems with it, but I can't say it really destroyed my viewing experience. I really did enjoy a lot of this movie, and probably a lot of the points I made here are nitpicks on my part, but I definitely can't help but feel that with a longer runtime, we could have had a really satisfying resolution to arcs that were created. Again, this is just my own personal opinion. 
Maybe I enjoyed the film so much that it felt like the time flew by. Regardless, I really enjoyed the movie. It is a flawed masterpiece, but one I will definitely be enjoying time and time again. Now, what are your thoughts on this movie? What did you enjoy and what didn't you personally like? All opinions are subjective and all opinions are different. So please do let me know down in the comments below. But yes, guys, this wraps up everything I did wish to say here. I hope you've enjoyed this movie review as I haven't done one of these in a while. And yes, it is in a very different format to that of my original HB review stuff. But that for the most part is because I was covering absolutely abysmal movies. This one's actually good and actually entertaining. Again, it's a flawed masterpiece, but one I can definitely enjoy. But yes, guys, this wraps up everything I did want to say here. So if possible, before this video wraps up, let's try getting it to about 500 likes. And don't forget to take that bell as it will keep you up to date with everything that's going on with the channel. So as always, guys, please comment, like, subscribe and share this video with everyone you know. Please take care and I'll see you all next time.